Hi there, before I bought my Kindle, the first e-reader I've ever heard of was actually the Barnes & Noble Nook device. Now, I have nothing against Barnes & Noble, but I'm very grateful that I got a Kindle instead. At the end of the day, both these devices help us read more books and that is what matters. But there's something about the Kindle that keeps me coming back to read more. The Nook does have some great features though, and that is what today's video is all about. I really wanna dive into the software experience between Nook and Kindle and explain to you why I think the Nook is lagging so far behind and why that makes such a big impact on your experience while using an e-reader. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is actually the most common thing you do on any of these devices, and that's unlocking them. On the Nook over here, to unlock the device, you have a power button on the top center. And I'm not gonna get into the hardware, but I will have to say the placement of both the Kindle power button and the Nook power button is equally as frustrating. But the one thing that I find really annoying on the Nook is you have to swipe to unlock every single time, no matter what you do, to open up your device. Now on the Kindle, things are very different yet very similar at the same time. Let me explain. To unlock a Kindle, you press the power button and depending on which model you have, you may have to swipe to unlock. Kindle makes you pay $20 to remove lock screen advertisements from the main screen of the Kindle. If you have lock screen ads, you have to swipe to unlock. There's nothing you can do about that. But if you pay the extra money, they remove those advertisements. And when you press the power button, it goes straight into the software. Now, if you also pay that extra money to remove the advertisements, you also get a feature called display cover, which I find to be really nice. What it'll do is it'll display the book cover of the book that you're currently reading as the book cover in the screensaver of the device, which is really nice. It makes your Kindle feel more like an actual book than just an e-reader device. As far as I know, you can't do that on the Nook. The next thing I wanna talk about is actually what you see after you unlock the device, and that is the home screen and the organization of the software on both Nook and Kindle. Now on the Nook, the way they chose to lay out the device is by using tabs on the bottom of the software. On the bottom of the screen, you have a tab for your home screen, your library, the current book that you're reading, the readouts feature, which I really don't like, honestly, and obviously the store as well. I really wish this first tab of the software was the default home screen. It's just my library. That's what I wanna see. But instead they chose to make it a bunch of recommendations, which honestly, I get it. They wanna make you buy more books. But I do like the fact that these icons are really, really large at the bottom of the screen. It makes using the Nook so much nice and pleasant. I don't like having small icons and small text. Having these bigger, larger sized icons makes tapping them very, very easy. Speaking of book recommendations, I do wanna talk about that readouts tab that I mentioned a second ago. That tab is basically an entire tab of the software dedicated to book recommendations. And I really don't like that. I don't like how they're making such a big icon on the main part of the software dedicated to advertisements and recommendations. So that is one point deducted from Nook. Now over in Kindle world, things are a bit simpler in my opinion. When you unlock the device, you really only have two tabs to choose from, which is the home tab and the library tab. Better yet, these tabs are actually labeled with the word home and library. Over on the Nook, they use icons, which don't really always make the most sense. You have to kind of figure out which each icon represents. On Kindle, everything is written out for you. There's no ambiguous icons. The ones that you know at the store are very obvious. Now the default home tab on the Kindle is very similar to the Nook home screen with a bunch of recommendations and suggestions from Amazon. But one thing that Kindle allows you to do is hop over into the library tab and every time you go back to your home screen now, it'll default to the library tab and you don't have to see that home tab anymore with all those suggestions. A new thing that was also recently added to the Kindle experience is in between the home and library tab, you have a little book icon over here, which is a shortcut to open up the book that you were last reading. That is also very similar to what is available on the Nook. Overall, I think the Kindle software organization is much simpler and easier to understand. I also like how the book covers are so large. It's very visual and I think the Nook does a good job with the large icons and some of the icons do make sense, but a lot of it requires some fiddling around with to really understand how to use your Nook. Whereas the Kindle, I think people who are less tech savvy can probably jump into using it without much issue. Next up, I wanna talk about what books are supported on both devices and how the bookstore experience is. Now I will say, I think Nook 
has some advantages here over the Kindle. On a Nook, if you want to put on some EPUB files from the internet, it's very easy. All you have to do is plug in your Nook to the computer and drag and drop your EPUBs onto the device. Once you do that, you'll see the books with the book covers appear on the Nook without any issue. Now, Nooks also do have support for OverDrive, which is great for library books, but you do have to do that in a bit of an extra process by downloading the library book onto your computer and then dragging and dropping it onto your Nook. There's no way to do it directly on the device. The biggest difference though, is if you do wanna buy books directly from a marketplace, the Nook marketplace really isn't the best when you compare it to Amazon. Amazon has the largest bookstore in the world and you can find any book you want really on that marketplace. On the Nook bookstore, you really have to dig deep to find books that you may be interested in. Not every book that you wanna read will be on there. A quick example, I recently published a book called Supercharger Reading, which is only available on the Kindle store. And that is because as a self-published author, I know that 99.9% .9 of people who read my book will be using a Kindle or can buy the book off of Amazon. And that is why most independent authors at least choose Amazon as their default marketplace. But I have to say though, if you do download books outside of any marketplace, you have third-party books from other sources that are in EPUB format, the Nook definitely has the advantage there. Now let me talk about the Kindle and how the book support is over there on Amazon side of the world. Now, Kindles definitely have some advantages, but they also have some disadvantages. The first disadvantage is their compatibility with EPUBs when you compare it to the Nook. Amazon did just release an update which allows people to email EPUB files over to their Kindle. It's all done wirelessly, which is actually a really nice feature. However, what ends up happening though is Amazon is not actually putting the EPUB on your Kindle. What they're doing is converting it to an Amazon format. So by the time it's on your Kindle, it is no longer an EPUB. So if you have a collection of EPUBs and you want to own the file outright where you know you have full control over it, this file format will not really work well on your Kindle. Yes, you can get it onto your Kindle, but it's not a great way to store your EPUBs on the Kindle itself. Another super annoying thing about putting EPUBs on your Kindle as of right now is there's no support for book covers. So basically they show up as a third party document on the Kindle, which just has a default wallpaper and no book cover support. So it does not look nearly as nice as it would on a Nook. Kindles also do have support for overdrive and borrowing library books, though it doesn't seem to be working for most people outside of America. If you live in America though, you can use the Libby app to get overdrive books, library books from your local library borrowed onto your Kindle. It's actually a very nice process, but again, it only really works well in America. If you're an international customer of a Kindle, this is not gonna work for you. And lastly, the biggest advantage of owning a Kindle in terms of book support is the Amazon Kindle store. They have all the books you can ever think of when it comes to independent authors, traditional publishers and Kindle Unlimited and all the other types of media you can download from the Amazon store. It's just so hard to compete with that. Next up, I wanna talk about some note-taking features on both Kindle and Nook. Now, as a nonfiction reader myself, I like to take notes while I read. I highlight a lot. I type in notes all the time. It's something I rely on very heavily. So this is something that I really, really want to emphasize. Let's start with talking about the Nook. The Nook actually does have highlight and note-taking features, but they just do a very poor job of executing them. On every other device of the world, when you wanna highlight some text, you just drag your finger across the text and it'll highlight it. On a Nook, it doesn't work that way. You have to press and hold on a single word first and then drag and drop this little cursor thing that comes up in order to highlight it. It just makes it so much more complicated and it never works the way you want it to. And even if you do manage to take highlights and notes on your Nook, there is no really easy way to export those notes off of your Nook. For me, I like to use apps like Readwise or even just exporting my notes via text files to my computer. It's very easy to do that on a Kindle. There's very several actually export options for you to choose from. On a Nook, there is no such thing as being able to easily export your notes and highlights. On the Kindle, taking notes and highlighting things is just so much easier. And honestly, it's probably the number one reason why I've chosen to use a Kindle as my default e-reader of choice. 
Highlighting is a breeze. You just press and drag on the text. It highlights it. It automatically syncs to the Kindle Cloud and all my Kindles are in sync. Then on top of that, they have export support for PDFs. You can press one button on the Kindle itself and export all your notes as a PDF. Or you can use apps like Readwise, which will automatically export your notes for you and sync them to apps like Notion or Evernote. Basically, if you're a nonfiction reader, using a Kindle is a no-brainer when you compare it against the Nook. I'm really interested to hear what you think. Are there any Nook readers in the world that are watching this video? Please leave a comment down below and let me know why you prefer using a Nook. And also, if you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll enjoy my video comparing Kindle and Kobo, which is a different platform, probably a bigger competitor to Kindle than Nook is. Check that video out, link on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.